take garbage and make it shine This whole project is asinine When sometime with me I can guarantee This old junk will soon tone the line I can't find the words This song is absurd We're polishing turds We're polishing turds Alright, welcome to Polishing Turds Again, on Real Good at Doing Stuff, the best TV show you will ever see. Uh, today we're going to talk about honing. I know we've been threatening to talk about this for a while and haven't got around to it, but today is the day we're going to hone some stuff. Um, now, what does that mean? It means that in this case, we're going to hone a cylinder bore. We're trying to achieve a certain clearance on the piston so that when the piston grows, it won't, it'll still have a little bit of clearance for oil and whatnot. If we get the thing too tight, it'll seize. Too big, it's going to be floppy in there. Problems either way. So through the honing process, we can slowly creep up on that size, set our clearance the way we want it, and it's simultaneously, we're going to um, make sure that the cylinder is as straight as we can possibly make it, cylindrical, round, no taper, no barrel. We're going to try to get this, uh, you know, structurally or geometrically a certain way, right? And that, that's best done through a honing process. Uh, the other thing we're going to do simultaneously, maybe equally if not more important, is we're going to establish a certain finish on the cylinder. Believe it or not, your piston rings, in theory, never touch the block. Uh, it's the, your motor seals on a thin film of oil. Uh, anywhere in your motor, you don't want metal to metal contact. Um, and the way we keep this thin film of oil in place or allow it to maintain itself all the time is the crosshatch. Think of it at the crosshatch as the highway for your cylinder oil, right? That's how the oil gets around. If this finish isn't right, it's not going to oil the cylinder right, therefore it's not going to seal, right? So it's very important that we achieve a certain finish and this finish varies on what we're trying to do. Um, if we're building a natural aspirated motor that has zero W20 oil, finish might be a little different than a blown alcohol motor that has 60 weight oil, right? Um, it's not really about the fuel, it's about the oil in my opinion, right? Uh, but the, they kind of go hand in hand because if you're using, if you're blown alcohol, you probably got this type of oil. Anyhow, the way we achieve this is different rocks. Um, we have stones, two of them on the head at any time that we use to, to hone this block out and there are different grades, different grits, right? Different roughnesses, kind of like different grades of sandpaper. 80 grit sandpaper versus 320 grit sandpaper, right? And as we hone this thing out, come to size, we're gonna change grits to adjust the finish. We're gonna change the grits, change our pressure in the hone, and change our procedure in the hone a little bit to achieve a desired finish. Um, and anyhow, we're gonna go through this procedure a little bit out today Let's go now out to the machine and see how the, all of this is applied. Okay, we talked about the stones. I went over them a little bit. Now it's time to talk about the machine that we're going to use the stones in. This is our rock swisher. <laughs> um, this machine is a Sunnen CK10. It's old as dirt. It's like a Swiss watch. It works every time. It, it's a fantastic machine. These things are uh, pretty much ubiquitous, ubiquitous throughout the high performance uh, world. Now they have newer ones, the CV616 and a, whatever. This one, I don't know how old it is, it's old as dirt, but it works great. And the newer ones, in a lot of cases, they don't really do much different. And you hear about diamond stones and this, that, and the other. A lot of times, like your high-end machine shops have gone back to the rocks. You know, and here we use rocks. Um, proudly, we're proud users of rocks. Uh, so, um, but anyhow, we're going to talk a little bit about this machine. Uh, fun fact, I bought this machine a long, long time ago from a, an, uh, an older gentleman who was retiring, in, racing engine builder, named Jack Tant. And Jack Tant used to build 
V6 racing engines for Dale Earnhardt when Dale Earnhardt uh, was running the V6 Bush stuff a long time ago, right? Well, now the machine is here in Mooresville, North Carolina, and Dale Earnhardt is buried about a mile and a half from here as the crow flies. Weird fun fact. So uh, if you have your block machined here, you'll have something in common with Dale Earnhardt. Not your driving ability. <laughs> <laughs> your, your block will be machined in the same place. That's about it. But uh, anyhow, uh, uh, let's talk about machine. Let, let's, tell, let's talk about the piston. In this case, we got a Wiseco dome piston. Got pretty skinny little rings. That's going to help us some with the power in this in this application. The lighter oil rings. We're going to lose some drag from the uh, dinosaur stuff that was in the the motor that we took apart. Uh, Brian at Line to Line Coating has uh, coated these skirts with their abradable coating. We use this stuff all the time, not all the time, we use it quite a bit and it's fantastic. Uh, we do a lot of, it's, it's really interesting what you can do with this stuff and it's, I've used various coatings over the years and none of them have come close to what this stuff does. It's, it's fantastic stuff. And I send a lot of pistons down there to Brian and he does great work. Um, so anyhow, this is the piston we're gonna use. We're gonna set up and measure the piston with a micrometer, right? And then we're gonna take this measurement and use a device called a dial bore indicator, right? To, uh, and this is what we're gonna tr kind of transfer this measurement to this device, which is a dial bore indicator. And we're gonna run this up and down the board. This is how we're gonna size the cylinder, how we're gonna measure it while we're making progress with our rocks. Um, that's the basics of that. Now, uh, one thing that we're going to do uh, before we get started is we're going to bolt uh, a torque plate on this thing. And what that is, it kind of when you bolt a, a small block Chevrolets are, are kind of the worst offenders about this. They have uh, what you call perimeter bolts, bolts right around the edge of this cylinder, five of them, which is great for some stuff. But one thing that it does tend to do is distort the cylinder wall. Um, much more than say a modern LS or a Coyote or something. They do things to keep that from happening, but these older motors really pull these cylinders out around and we bolt down a torque plate to cylinder. It's kind of like if you were to bolt a head on that distorts it, but you can't hone it, it's in the way, right? Well, a torque plate is basically a, uh, like bolting down a cylinder head, but there's holes where we can get our hone head through and, and do what we need to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is Torque that torque plate down on here just like we're assembling the engine and then we'll start from there. Okay, we got our torque plate torqued on which distorts the cylinders and hopefully the same fashion that the cylinder head is going to be so that we can hone the block while it's pulled around. Um, if we didn't do that, when we bolted the head on afterwards, it's going to distort it and it's going to be out around. So we try to pre-distort it, make it round when it's distorted, right? All right, so now here's our dial board gauge. This thing was 30 over, our piston now is 40 over. So we've got around 10 thousandths we got to take out of this dude. And uh, we're starting from scratch here. We're going to use four different stones. Uh, and for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to call them A, B, C, and D. We're not getting into what stones they are because inevitably there will be somebody who will tell me that those stones are crap and that'll never work. And if you don't know what stones they are, then you can't tell me that. And I can live the rest of my life not knowing that this didn't work. So for today, A, B, C, and D, uh, the first stone we're just going to get it close. We're going to take it to about three thousandths from side, size with our first rock. And then, uh, then after that, when we get them all to three thousandths from size, we're going to switch to rock B. And we'll go from there. So let's, let's do our first little switch in here. Also, this machine uses tons of, the way this works is it's a grinding operation. It uses tons of honing oil, which you'll see. Uh, honing oil and stones are both very expensive, which is why it costs you lots of money to have something honed. And if you go to whining about price when you pick up your block for honing, you need to not because this stuff is not cheap. But anyhow, here we go. Here's the original rough stone that we're going to use. 
nasty looking cylinders you're gonna fix. Alright, we've taken uh, taken this, this block to, uh, we're three thousandths from our final size right now, which means the piston will probably barely go in. Uh, so the cylinder, if you look at the finish, it's pretty daggone rough. You wouldn't want to run a motor like this. Probably could, but I don't think it'd be good. So anyhow, now we're going to Stone B. Huh, isn't that exciting? Alright, so now we're going to go all the way to size with this stone. Uh, which is going to be a lot slicker finish and uh, and then we're going to make another change but here we go stone B all the way to size <laughs> finished up with our second stones stone B and you see this finish is a lot slicker uh, than after the first stone and we're two size now so now we're gonna switch to our third set of stones and we're just gonna not do much of nothing at all we're not gonna change the size any we're just gonna change the finish a little bit with these last two stones in and out doesn't take any time and then we're pretty much gonna be done <music> So now we've finished uh, with the last two stones on this thing, and uh, you can see our final finish. Like I said, with, the, with these last two stones, we're barely touching anything. It, it only takes a few minutes to do this. We're just just kind of chopping the top of these peaks off, and uh, just barely changing the finish. And, and, and like I say, in a lot of cases, we don't even do this. But for this motor, it, it probably can take advantage of it. Um, so that's pretty much it for home. Now we'll have to check the, uh, the, uh, make sure the crank, crank has stroker clearance and deburr and polish things up a little bit, but the short block is going to be about ready to go together. Um, so that's about it for this episode. Maybe next week we're probably going to go over here to this machine and start working on, uh, the valve job which is another super critical part of this whole process and very interesting. So um, that's probably what the next episode is going to be about. Valve job on these Chinese super badass heads. Anyhow, that's enough for today.